Hi, you guys. Welcome back to Meaningful Motivations with Tracy Erickson. And of course, if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Tracy Erickson. And in this video, I'm going to talk about all of the physical as well as the spiritual benefits of bathing. And we're going to talk about the symbolism of the bath. So stay tuned. It is that time of year for me, the time of year where I love to take baths. But it's not only because it's so cold in the wintertime and bathing is a fantastic way to bring your body temperature back up to a place of comfort, but bathing is also a spiritual practice, to me anyway. And so I decided to make a video all about the benefits of bathing. Because bathing is something that I have always done as part of my spiritual practice. I found this article by Pentucket Medical on 10 scientifically proven health benefits of taking a bath. So these are the physical benefits of bathing. And on this list, it included that bathing can improve your heart health and it can also help you to breathe easier. Your brain and nervous system can benefit from bathing and also your muscles, joints, and bones. You can also take care of your blood and immunity with the bath and you can balance your hormones. Bathing also cleanses and moisturizes your hair, skin, and eyes and your core body temperature will be optimal through bathing. Giving yourself time to soak in a bath of warm water actually gives you not only those physical benefits we just discussed, but there are also spiritual benefits to bathing. And those spiritual benefits are kind of in tune with just connecting with your inner self. You can turn your bath time into your meditation time. And it's actually very easy. Water itself can hold your intentions. So if you watched the, the video I made a long time ago, all about the power of your thoughts and how it was proven in water, um, then you kind of get what I'm saying. If you haven't seen that video, then go ahead and check it out and I'll be sure to put a link for that one up above. But basically, Whatever intentions that you place into water, the water holds those intentions for you and helps to bring them out in the physical as well. Whenever I talk about the spiritual benefits of something that we do here in the physical, it is, it's always a good time to learn about the symbolism behind what it is that we're doing because behind the symbol lies the spiritual truth. So, in light of that, let's go to Tashin's Book of Symbols and see what it has to say about bathing. In the book, it says, The symbolism of the bath extends far beyond a simple scrubbing at the end of the day. It reaches into religious rite and psychic transformation, such as we see in the sculptured Greek goddess of our image, arising in beautiful freshness from her ritual bath. Historically, the bath as an immersion in a pool or natural spring was long known in Greece, as well as in ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, and the Asian world. In Imperial Rome, communal bathing was a popular recreation. During the 4th century CE, the city of Rome alone supported some 800 public baths, which are also centers of social life and hedonism, drinking, eating, and freewheeling sexuality. 
Ascetic early Christianity turned against the Roman bath as a temptation to debauchery. If bathing is wrong, then I don't want to be right. But Christian baptism, with its commitment to the life of the spirit over that of the flesh, was in itself a bath-like immersion, originally meant to symbolize drowning and representing death to the old life and one's rebirth as a new being. Baptism's Jewish ancestor, the ritual bath or mikhev, is a symbolic purification. Many traditions like Native American, Muslim, Greek, Eulogian ministries, and Jewish have required bathing or washing as symbolic purification before approaching the deity in prayer or ritual. Some have even immersed statues of the gods themselves in ritual cleansing baths, symbolizing renewal of the connection between God and the faithful. Cleaning of the worshiper's mouth and ears is emphasized in Islam in order to sanctify one's prayers and open one's hearing to the will of God. In other cultures, such as the Japanese, communal bathing is a secular setting for social life, relaxation, and a sense of balance with the forces of nature. In the language of symbols, Water represents your subconscious or unconscious parts of yourself and the fact that those can be cleansed. And these subconscious or unconscious parts of the self usually have to do with your intuition, your emotions, and your shadow. And it still goes on to state that beyond these meanings of purification and healing, the bath stands for a place of spiritual change or transformation. Ritual baths mark major life milestones like marriage, burial, birth. In medieval alchemical symbolism, bath, submersion, drowning, and baptism are synonyms and symbolize the breaking down and cleansing of old, outmoded states of being, leading to the birth of the rejuvenated, illumined man. Depth psychology finds this same symbolism in modern dreams in which swimming, bathing, and showering are seen as immersion in unconscious forces that can dissolve the dreamer's cramped outlook and bring the possibility of change. Such change, of course, may lead either to growth, renewal, creativity, or to psychic dissolution and disaster. Since water is so great at holding our intentions that we set, we can actually set intentions into our own bath to cleanse ourselves of anything that we want cleansed or to bring out more of something that we want to bring out. Many times I take baths with rose quartz and essential oils that align me with self-love because so many times when I'm out in the world, I forget to reconnect with my own inner self and give myself the love that I feel is needed. So if you feel like you need more love in the world, probably because you need some more love for yourself, you know, that kind of idea. So many times I'll use, like I said, a bath for self-love. But there are other times where I use a bath to find clarity and I just want to wash away all of my existing beliefs around a certain situation. So you can use these baths to bring something out or to cleanse something off. It can be used either way. Bathing is so important to my own spiritual health that I've actually created my own products around bathing. And so some of those products are simply just bath bombs that include essential oils and Epsom salts and all of these things to help cleanse your body and to bring in intention, right? But I also create little uh, bath salts, such as this Just Rosy scented bath salt. Now, roses connect you with love, self-love or romantic love, it doesn't really matter. But whenever I'm taking one of my special ritual baths, I'm sure to use something similar to this. 
This includes the scent, the flower petal, and the essence of the rose itself to bring that out. I also have created Young and Daisy bath salts. Now this has the flowers, the little daisy heads inside, and other flowers as well that kind of connect you with youthfulness and beauty. So if you want to bring out more youthfulness and beauty, you can do something similar to this using the proper essential oils, flowers and herbs, as well as the different kinds of salts. Um, and when I like to take a bath to purify and rejuvenate and to regenerate my mind, body, and spirit, that's when I like to use my Lotus bath tea bags that I've created. Um, so these include not only green tea, which is actually really good for your skin, but also includes different salts, once again, as well as lotus petals. And if you know anything about the lotus flower, that is very symbolic of spiritual rejuvenation because the lotus grows into a beautiful flower, but before becoming this beautiful flower, it must first grow through this thick, mucky, murky water. It is also a great idea to use crystals in your bath. So you can use crystals that are safe in water and actually place them in the bath water after setting intentions, of course. But even if you want to use crystals such as selenite that you wouldn't really want to emerge in water, you can place those around the bathroom or around the edge of the bathtub so that you are still kind of in the presence of the healing energy of these crystals during your ritual bath. So it's really easy to create what kind, whatever kind of ambiance you want by using herbs, flowers, essential oils, and crystals. In fact, I've even created crystal bombs at my apothecary, and these are simply larger bath bombs that are infused already with intention, and there is a crystal inside of the bath bomb. So once the bath bomb has dissolved, you are left with this beautiful crystal that you can then, you know, bring those intentions with you throughout the day, even after the bath. Once you have spiritually cleansed the space with sage, you can then begin to fill the bathtub with hot water. You're going to want to fill it with some pretty hot water at the beginning, at least, so that that salt can really dissolve. Um, and make sure that it's the proper temperature that you want to submerge your entire body in as well. So in the end, just make sure if you fill it halfway with hot water to then bring the heat down a little bit to a comfortable temperature for you. So once you've done that and filled the tub, then it's time to ensure that you have all your intentions set, not only in the materials like the crystals and the herbs or flowers, but you want the water itself to have intentions inside. This is where I like to add Reiki to my bath water because as I'm sending the Reiki through my hands into the water, I'm also letting it pass through my intentions that I have set for the ritual bath. If you do not practice Reiki, that's okay. Um, all you have to do is simply pray over your water or speak to the water. Basically, in some way, whether in your mind or out loud, communicate your intention for this bath to the water itself. Once you have filled the tub, put all of your ritual ingredients inside, and set your intentions, then you simply submerge as much of your body into the water as possible. I know that bathtubs sometimes aren't very large for our bigger human bodies, um, but submerge as much of it into the water as possible. Find a nice place in your mind of silence and simply try to meditate for the next 20 to 30 minutes while laying, soaking, and relaxing. Do you take ritual baths? If you do, tell me your steps in the comments down below. I would love to hear how your process may be similar or even different from my process. 
because we all have our own ways of doing things. But baths are definitely one of my absolute favorite uh, spiritual practices. Um, and like the book of symbols said, bathing to me is not just about cleaning the physical body. It's about a spiritual cleanse that can take place within your inner being. Tashin's Book of Symbols sums it up like this. Clearly, entry into unconscious waters can be treacherous and is not for the naive or ungrounded. And yet, it must be said that even in frenetic modern life, descent of one's body into a bath leads to a moment out of time, to a kind of oblivion, but also to a state in which anything can be imagined and the seeds of new possibilities can come into being. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. So if you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share this video with all your friends out there. And of course, if you're a viewer but not yet a subscriber, I would just love for you to click subscribe down below. And once you have subscribed, you can then turn on that notification bell if you would like to be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time with me. I love you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.